Hello, I'm Aksubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to bring forth your truth. And I pray for every heart listening and watching right now, that the influence of your spirit will rest upon them, to bring them to the place of truth. That their hearts be ignited to your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I began to talk to you yesterday about our faith walk. You know, whatever we call it. Praise God. But, but, but living the life. That's what we're talking about. And then, now we, we, we read Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 where it says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. Now, note that part. You cannot please God until you walk by faith. There is no other way. Then he tells you how faith works. He says, because he that comes to God must believe that God is. And I was sharing with you yesterday. And like when, you, when you come to God for something, whatever it is, if you come to God for salvation, for example, do you believe that he can save you? You know, I've seen a lot of people, you know, are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. When did he get saved? Oh, 2012. Okay. What happened? What's your testimony? Yeah, I went to church that day and the pastor preached. The message really touched me. So when he made the altar call, I just knew it was time. And then I went out for the altar call. So how has life been before then? Oh, so, so. At least, you know, I, I go to church more often now. And I, come on now. Praise <laughs> God. And, and, and you're looking for something and then you don't find it. What are you looking for? An active walk with God, which is a walk of faith. Now, sometimes people begin to say things like, but God has been faithful. Oh. When I look back, you know, I, I think it's obvious that God has been faithful. Now, there are certain things you, you learn along the way as you walk with the Lord. And those things, or certain things you experience along the way. Now, the reason for those things is to confirm your faith journey. But if you don't know to acknowledge those things and acknowledge God in them, your, your, your faith work will never be confirmed. Now, when I say confirm, what do I mean by confirm, confirmation? I'm not talking about going for classes so that you'll be confirmed, you know, like some churches do. That's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about is you get to that point where you say, now I know that God is with me. That's the confirmation I'm talking about. If you don't have that as a believer, you're still shaking. Now, this happens in different ways. First of all, you must believe that God is. Okay, so what do you want now, for example? Maybe you're sick in your body. Or maybe you need financial help. You, you just need money or you need your finances to change or you're in so much debt you're thinking of what to do right so now i just read to you without faith it's impossible to please god because anyone who comes to god must believe that he is so the first question you ask yourself is this do i believe god can heal me do i believe god can bring me out of this financial mess do I believe God can help my marriage? Do I believe? Now, when so someone can ask you, do you believe God? Oh, of course, I believe God. There. Now, what are the bases of your belief? Going back to what I started talking about yesterday, what are your facts? Why do you believe? Why do you believe God will heal you? Why do you believe God will save your marriage? Why do you believe God will save you? Why? Now, when you ask a question like this and, and people begin to think, and they re many times they realize, because what I'm sharing with you now, it, it's, it's most times you know, you're interacting with somebody and, and the, the Spirit of God guides you through a journey with that person. And then you go, wow, I never thought about this. 
and then it becomes an opening for a new teaching to you by the Spirit of God. Yeah, that's what happens. That's why when we talk about someone's faith being active, it will show in his communication, communication with people. If there is no way your faith will be active and you'll be quiet. It's impossible. You will find a way to express yourself in teaching, in encouraging. Somehow, you can't, you can't keep quiet. And that's what real witnessing is. It's not carrying your Bible going from door to door and you're talking, Jesus loves you, repent. Jesus. Now, there are people who, 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 for example, every morning they go out with a megaphone. Jesus loves you. Now, that's wonderful. But you see, if you are not really interacting with people, sharing your testimony, what is your testimony? Your experiences with God and, and hearing questions from them, you are really not witnessing. That, that's very important for you to note. But the one who's really active, he cannot, you can't be quiet. It's impossible for you to be quiet. So you're in a situation now. Okay, I, I, need, I, need, I need help. You need help. Now, what do you know from God that will make you believe that he can help you? Not, let me try God with that. He can help me. It may start from there. But you see, you grow and you grow. And how do you grow? By putting yourself in the right environment. See, you want God to help you. Then you've got to put yourself in the environment for God to help you. Now, what's that environment? It's the environment of believing. You remember Jesus came to his disciples one time. And they were trying to cast out the devil from a young boy. And then they did everything they knew to do. It didn't work. The devil didn't go. And Jesus came and just spoke the word. And then the devil left the boy. And then they came to Jesus and said, Sir, why couldn't we cast it out? And what was Jesus' response? He didn't say you lacked faith. He said because of your unbelief. Now that is very powerful. See, <laughs> It's amazing Jesus didn't say because of your lack of faith. No, he said because of your unbelief. I'll tell you why Jesus said that. Now, most of the things I'll share with you is not just um, something I read somewhere. These, these are things I've, I've taken time to ask the Lord. Now, that's what I, I look at the scripture. They're like, Lord, Lord, forget. I mean, why would you tell these guys this? And, and, and he will explain it to you. So why, Jesus, why did Jesus say because of your own belief? I'll tell you why. Remember, before this event, Jesus had sent them out. And then the Bible said he gave them power to heal the sick and to cast out devils. So they went out and with that power that Jesus gave to them. And then they casted out. I mean, they came back and said, man, Lord, even the demons were subject to us at the mention of your name. Wow, they were so excited. They've never experienced such a thing before. Now, so they felt, man, so, so this is how easy this thing is. Yes. Okay, so now, Jesus didn't send them out. They, they were in their place, and then someone comes and says, hey, I'm looking for Jesus. Oh, Jesus is not around. What is it? My son. Ah, small thing, small thing, small thing. Now, they, they went against that demon with the same mindset of what they did when they went out. Are you listening to me? So, Jesus must have told them, look, when you see a demon, this is what you should say. Now, Jesus said that based on the assignments that he was giving to them. It is not a rule. Now, this is one thing you must understand. That's what, what, how people get stuck in their faith work with God. So, now... They, their mind was on the fact that ah, Jesus has given us power to do this thing and so we can do it. So when they met a demon that resisted them, they didn't know what to do. Why? Because their truth was incomplete. You don't cast out demons by formula. There are demons that will respond to you. But there are some demons that will not respond. In fact, they will confuse you the more. So, Jesus came and they said, Master, what do we do? And Jesus casted out that devil. 
And then, Master, why couldn't you cast? He said, because of your unbelief. What do you mean unbelief? You didn't believe that God in you can cast out that demon. You didn't believe it. But, but if we didn't believe, why did, it, why did we try in the first place? You were trying based on what happened before. Not really God. So they didn't believe that God is, is, is there with them to tell them what to do. Now, do you see where I'm going to now? When you believe that God is there and God is there to help you do this thing, because of that belief, you now, now when you try the formula and the formula doesn't work, what do you do? You step back and say, Lord, how do I handle this? You see, that simple statement just show that you believe that God is there with you. Now, why do we believe that God is there? Because he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's what he said. So I'm trying to do something based on what I have done before. I'm trying to do something based on what I, I was taught or what I know. And then it, it's not working. So what do you do? Give up? Now, when you give up, you didn't believe. Now, that's why Jesus said, because of your unbelief. If you had believed, you would have connected with God and he would have told you exactly what to do in that situation. Now, the same thing with your finances, the same thing with your health. So you are sick in your body. And they say, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, pastor say, when we break bread, healing will come to our body. Okay, fine. And then you go take the communion. And then you, you eat. You pray. You speak in tongues for 30 minutes. And then you eat it. That's I eat this flesh and this blood. Health is restored in the name of Jesus. And then you eat it. And then you wait one hour, two hours. That whole, in fact, that ninth day, the fever was something else. And then you wake up the next morning and oh, oh, I don't understand. This thing, does it really work? And you're thinking, maybe I should, I don't know, maybe I should just run to the hospital. Now, there's nothing wrong in going to the hospital. But you see, as a child of God, you must understand something. The way we walk is different from the way the world works. If you study scriptures very well, I think that was King Asa. The Bible says he, he got sick. And then because he got sick, he went to the doctor. And then God was angry with him for going to the doctor and he, it cost him his life. He died and God said because he went to the physician and he didn't go to God. And then someone reads that and he's wondering, why, why would God be angry? So someone would take that out of context to say, you see, that's why we must not go to doctors. You see, that's, that's the funny thing. You know, people read things and then you just take it out of context. No, his problem was spiritual. Asa's problem was complete disobedience to the Lord. Now, instead of him to go to the Lord and repent, he went to the physician to help him undo what his, his disobedience have done. See? And when he did that, he incurred the wrath of God and he died. It is not that the doctors killed him. It is not that God was angry that he went to a doctor. No, in that particular situation, he knew that all he needed to do was to repent before the Lord and God would have healed him. But instead of repenting before the Lord, he went to get a doctor to substitute. It, more like God is, is, is flogging you. And then you are running to uh, someone else to say, deliver me from the hand of God. And then the person too is trying to, let me see how I can deliver you from the hand of God. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hand of God in the first place. See, that's why even as a, as a medical doctor, you have to be wise when you're dealing with an issue. You know, you think it's a simple issue. Now that's why we all have to be spiritual now. Now someone walks up to you and says, oh, I'm sick. You see, a, 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 a medical doctor supposed to be listening to the voice of the spirit at all times. And he said, oh, okay, I, think, I think I know what this thing is. And while you're, while you're trying to look at the history of, of prescribed certain drugs, and then you hear the voice of the Lord say, this, this guy is sitting before you. is walking in disobedience to me. Tell him to go and repent, and I'll heal him. Oh, <laughs> Ogasa, your situation is not medical. <laughs> and I'm not going to try to lie to you or do anything to you. Your situation needs repentance. What did I do? I know I don't know what you did, but the Lord is just telling me to go and repent before the Lord. 
it's okay. Thank you, sir. And then he goes to repair. And then the sickness goes. And that's because the doctor believed. Praise God. Our time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.